another quick question I have. Uh, you said that you were doing direct sales from your site, uh, and then you're also doing retail. So how do you reconcile the two? Because you can't be selling the same thing that the retail is selling, or, or, or else you're kind of like competing against them, and then they would get kind of pissed off. So did you guys just do like the customization uh, through your site? No, we ended up, uh, we did sell the same thing to both uh, through retail and via our online store. So at our online store, you could buy any of our cameras, the same cameras you'd get at Amazon or at Best Buy. You could buy all of our accessories. We did tripods and waterproof cases and all the like. You know, all of which you could get from Amazon, most of which you couldn't get at retail, right? They just didn't carry as wide a selection. And we sold our personalized stuff. And the vast majority of our business uh, remained the cameras, so just the standard cameras. It was interestingly enough, we tended to sell not a camera, but a camera plus an accessory. Uh, we think it was a gift thing. Uh, and what we did to make that okay with retail is that we only sold at full price. So if you bought a camera from Flip Video directly, and it was a 129 camera, you paid 129. There was never a discount. So at Amazon, you always paid, you know, Amazon was always the lowest price, maybe 119, 109, 99. Best Buy was frequently low price, but they also, we showed them and we had the, the we had the metrics to show it, that people would come to our website and look at our website, and that actually drove people to retail. Like, yeah, I want one of those, but I want to go touch it first. And so Best Buy believed that because we weren't competing with them on price and because we were sending them customers, that they were okay with that. Now, I've actually never understood why somebody went to flip the flip.com and paid us 129 for a camera that they could get for 99 from Amazon and not pay for shipping. So I mean, we, we charge for shipping as well. I guess I do it sometimes because I know that if I buy it directly from you as a small company, you get more money than if I buy it from Amazon. Most people don't think that way. They don't have that knowledge. And why they continued to buy from us rather than from the cheaper, more easier sources was a, a thing we long debated. And the best answer we came up with was brand loyalty, that we had actually created a strong enough brand that people thought they were entering, and, and they were entering into a trusted relationship with us. They wanted to buy from us. And we did take care of our customers very well, um, and we did see customer service as one of our main ways of gathering information and, uh, and gathering sort of what, what's the, what are the, not only are the problems with our existing products, but what do customers want? What do they want more of? How can we make them happier? Customer service for us was a way to get that information rather than being an expense. And so we were happy to have that direct relationship with the customers, even though it, it drove our expenses up because we got that information. So what would you say the percentage of, uh, you know, direct sales versus retail? Was it like, you know, 5% direct sales? And the, the no, rest we did retail? pretty good. We did about 20% direct sales, which is unusually high. Um, and different companies have different strategies about this. You know, some don't do direct sales. It's a pain in the ass to do direct sales. You've got to set up someone to do it for you. You've got to take care of your own inventory and your own forecasting. You know, and better, better just have a website and then send everybody to Amazon or Best Buy, right? Makes life easier. Um, some people have different philosophies about, you know, let's say your product's in demand for Christmas. Uh, do you stock your website or do you stock Best Buy? All right, which is better for your company? If you don't stock Best Buy, you're going to piss them off. They're going to kick you off the shelf. Best Buy is great advertising, right? People walk through the store and they see your product on the shelf. Best Buy sends out circulars. It's, it's an advertising thing just to be in a store that you don't necessarily get from your own website. But you get more margin more dollars if you sell it via your website. And your website's kind of a marketing tool as well. So this is not like there's a right way to do it. At Flip, we decided that our website was our primary channel. And that in our dream world, we would never work with Amazon or Best Buy. In reality, they were, you know, they were the majority of our sales went through those two companies. But ideally, we'd have a direct uh, connection to our customer. We would sell it directly and take care of them. Other, other companies think differently about that. And I'm not saying that there's a better answer. I would definitely think about it. I don't think the 20% would necessarily be higher. I mean, if you're in Amazon, if you're in Best Buy, you're gonna sell a lot of units that way. Um, you know, Best Buy is a, it's great to be in Best Buy, and the only problem is that you're in Best Buy, right? You've got all these inventories and returns, and they want money from you, and they're gonna go out of business maybe this year or next year or the year after, or not, who knows, right? It's a constant debate. 
Circuit City's gone. All sorts of retailers are gone. There's basically nobody left except for Best Buy, which puts them in a pretty strong position to negotiate with you, which is a pain in the ass. Amazon is nice, right, because they've got that short inventory cycle, and they'll take all your stuff because they don't have any warehouse expenses to speak of. But just because you're available on Amazon doesn't mean anybody can find you on Amazon. There's so much stuff there that you're lost in the noise. I don't think, if I, if I were starting a business tomorrow, I would definitely have my own distribution channel, my thinking, because I get the margin, I get the con contact with the customer, and I build my brand. And the real question is, would I also do these other things or not? At the end of the day, I think that I would, because they get you to volume faster. It's hard to deliver all your volume on your own site. Not because of the infrastructure or the operational issues, it's because of the marketing reach and, and the advertising reach that being in Best Buy and Amazon can get you if you're successful. But they come at cost, right? They're not free. There's a lot of support, a lot of hand-holding, a lot of money to be spent uh, treating those partners right and getting treat, treated right by them. There's a lot of knowledge, right? You have to become an expert on how Amazon works, right? And how their, their forecasting tools work and, and this, like, how do you sell to Amazon? It's not as easy as just calling up the phone and saying, take my product. Do you want to spend your time that way? Is it feasible? I mean, I've, I've actually, I was looking at starting a company recently. And I was thinking like, well, maybe it's online only for the first six to 12 months. And I, I think that's kind of appealing because in the first six to 12 months, it's almost nice to hold your volume down because you probably didn't do something right. And I'd rather take 1,000 returns than 100,000 returns. Right? And, and does that allow you to sort of manage your own scaling a little bit better? Maybe. I'm not going to give you a straight answer because I think it, it very much depends. But it's, there's not a wrong answer either. I would definitely think about those, all the options.